six seed, Darren Jolly. Jolly! Gee, that's a lovely long ball. He's kicked two. Darren Jolly. Darren Jolly, uh, tips in the hair as a demon. Did that get the sign off? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was going back a few years now. Um, went through that phase. The tips in the hair. Timing's everything. Uh, a premiership at the Swans and a premiership of the Pies. Yeah, look, I've been lucky uh, so far with my career and um, just been able to, to move around and get back to some good clubs. Lingy, you were ringside last night. There was a melee that broke out, and you said you gave the win to. G- Little push up king on points, is that true? <laughs> I was going to ask the question, Joel, who, who am I giving the win to? It was a little bit heated. Uh, was the push up king the real instigator of it all? Um, oh, to be honest, I, I'd have no idea. Um, I think emotion, <laughs> emotion, he was the one that punches 70 times. You must no, have a feel for it. I don't know, but look, emotions got the better of us all, and uh, yeah, we had a bit of a Bit of a cuddle in the end there and sort of fired us up in the third quarter. I love that, the straight bat. <laughs> when when on, I was a player, off. I used to go the straight bat as well, but now I'm in the media, I'm like, I want more than that. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> I can't give any more, mate, sorry. You just want to go to the results, have a look at what happened last night? Yeah, yeah, let's go. Right, uh, Collingwood and the Richmond Football Club last night. Another big house at the MCG. Oh, Happens every yeah. time they play. Collingwood out to a big lead. And the Tigers, uh, they clawed their way back into it, but a 21-point lead to the Pies. Cloak and Thomas, three apiece. Thomas, unbelievably good in the third term when it really mattered. And Brad Miller, who is married beautifully, kicked four goals. Lingy, your game. Take us away. Yes, it was, uh, it was an interesting game, a scrappy game, but really interesting in the rooms. Basher Hooley getting to meet the, fo- the artist formerly known as Cat Stevens, and I got to meet him as well, and I was wrapped. He's a fantastic uh, musician. Uh, early on, it was a little bit of a scrap, and I, I didn't really know which way it was going to go. Richmond were almost trying to play keepings off with the ball a bit. But Collingwood's efficiency was fantastic. Half time, it was a pretty lacklustre affair, but after half time, Collingwood just absolutely broke the game open. Uh, their, their big guns got going in Dale Thomas, Scott Pendlebury, really fired up. And Damien Hardwick, not really happy with the Richmond boys, in particular the midfielders at three quarter time, got stuck into them and asked for a lift. And that's what he got early in the f- fourth quarter. They had a bit of a go, they had a bit of a lift. But in the end, they were too far back and Collingwood got over the line fairly comfortably. Joel just running forward and kicking a goal there nicely to uh, put the icing on the cake. And the three things that I learned from the game was that Collingwood have definitely had a subtle change in their tactics as opposed to going around the boundary all the time. They're looking to bring the ball up the middle as much as they possibly can. Richmond's tools, they need to improve. Jack Rewalt and Ty Vickery only took two or three marks between them inside forward 50. They need more from those guys. And Dale Thomas, just absolute class. Just blew the game open. Three goals in the third quarter. Fantastic footballer. Or was it with five goals in seven minutes to start the third term, Dars, last night? Yeah, five in, in six. And uh, the melee was at half time, what we saw Joel was involved in. And then Collingwood would have come out and just gone bang. And as uh, Lingy just said, Dale Thomas was just unbelievable. He was quite the first half. He kicked three goals in that uh, period of time in the third quarter. And that was what they were so good at last year, Collingwood, your team, Joel. You always felt. In a 10 or 15 minute period, you could just blow the game away, and you did that uh, last night. Yeah, um, Daisy was challenged at half time by Bucks, and uh, as were a few of the players, and to his credit, he came out after half time and really responded. He took on uh, Ivan Maric, the man with the mullet, last night, uh, Joel. <laughs> I thought it was a great uh, battle, but uh, uh, in the end, definitely the upper hand uh, to yourself. But he's an improved player, Big Ivan. He's a competitor and uh, starting to really uh, get accustomed to senior footy. Yeah, he is. Um, certainly. Going back a few years, um, you know, he's certainly improved uh, now. And I said to him after the game, I actually enjoyed his mullet. I, I liked it. So it's something different, and he, uh, it suits him. I'm glad someone did, Darren. I'm not, probably not where I'm coming from. Just with Collingwood, you've won one, lost one, lost to a very hot side in Hawthorne. Uh, is it fair to say you're probably not going quite as well early on as you were last year? No, certainly not. Um, you know, just by judging on the players we've got out yet to come back in, um, we've blooded a few young guys uh, who, are, who are getting experience. So to get the, I think we've got four or five still yet to come in. So to get those back in um, and hopefully building towards the, the pointy end of the season. Last year you did slow down towards the end of the season for a, a number of factors. Has that been a feature all over pre-season, just to build up a little bit slower? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think we've had uh, certainly uh, an intense pre-season um, to obviously get everyone fit and ready to go. You know, the game goes up another level every year. Um, so we've had to adjust to that and, and certainly uh, it's, you know, it's a bit of bad luck for the players who have been injured, but they're coming back ready to go. 
Joel, I mentioned in the three things that the subtle change I felt in the game plan, uh, all the talk of last year, Malthouse preferring to go around the boundary. Is it a, a real game plan directive to start taking the ball up the middle of the ground more often? Uh, it's not It's not a massive change. It's something that we've looked at over the pre-season um, and I suppose Bucks has given us the confidence if it's, if it's there, let's go. Um, just, I suppose, being not so predictable to teams. Um, I think because last year you, you guys figured us out, you know, around the boundary line and, and uh, set one behind the play. So I think he's given us the confidence to go through the middle and, and, and just have it, give it, take the game on a bit more. Bucks has opened his account at uh, the senior level, which is terrific for Bucks. Mick Malthouse was there last night. He did a lap of honour at half time, won a premiership with the Tigers as a player, but Collingwood were honouring last night. And last night he just said, wine and pies. Different way to uh, go to the football with the family. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he certainly looks comfortable there. Different life, isn't it? It is. No, I don't know, uh, was he at the end as relaxed as he is now? He sort of seemed to have mellowed. We did the set afternoon football with him yesterday afternoon. He said, can't believe you can go to the football and enjoy it. <laughs> uh, I, I, uh, Mick, for me, was relaxed all the time. I I'd hardly saw him get uh, fired up and intense. Um, so it actually surprised me. Dane Swan, you liked his hairdo last night, didn't you, Andrew? Uh, when I was a kid, if I grew my hair long, my old man used to say, if you keep growing it long, you'll get a basin cut. You remember the basin? <laughs> Just literally put a basin in the shape. <laughs> that's a shot. That's a, a poorly look. Looks like the blokes out of the 1930s, the old footballers I, of the middle. I think he likes to blend into the crowd a bit, Swanny, didn't he? Yeah, <laughs> Giles, he he's understated, not, a, not uh, keen on much attention at all. No, he doesn't, doesn't want to stand out at all. No. <laughs> you're, you're a very keen golfer. Who's the best golfer at the Pies? Well, uh, luckily it's, it's none of the players. Uh, we're all about the same. Uh, Matty Lappin, I think, rates mm. himself quite high, and he's off uh, maybe five or six, uh, even maybe even less. But uh, the players are all around the same, so... We're, uh, there's no sharks out there. Aside from me, Joel's, who was your hero uh, as a kid? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, actually, really, I, I followed Jimmy Steins um, when I was younger, and, and I was lucky enough to have him as my ruck coach at Melbourne, and um, you know, I really followed his progress. Speaking of Melbourne, is it true you knocked back or nearly knocked back your first try out with Melbourne to stay on and uh, do a joinery apprenticeship? I did. I did knock it back. You did knock I, it back. Yeah, I knocked it back because um, back back in that day, those days, I think you had to try out for six weeks to be on the rookie list. Um, and I had a good job, and I had a few guys that did try it and didn't make it and lost their job. So I wasn't willing to do that. Um, so I said no. Continue to work, and then I think the day before the draft, Melbourne asked me to, to come down for a train and interview, and it went from there. We've Good. heard, Darren, you're a hopeless romantic underneath that, that rough exterior as a ruckman. <laughs> how did you, given you are that, how did you propose to your wife, Dee? Uh, I was up in up in Sydney, and um, I think I had it had it all planned. We'd, get, we'd go out one of these cliffs out on Maroubra, and it was a you know, beautiful sunny morning actually. And then the storm clouds came in, and it, uh, it rained. So that sort of <laughs> That sort of sport, that those plans. So I think we went inside, and she was upstairs, and it was like the night of the Logos or something on, and uh, I'd cooked her dinner, and I came, invited her downstairs, and uh, you know she was wondering what was going on with all this, you know, beautiful dinner and you know strawberries and everything, and she was pretty much telling me to hurry up because she wanted to see the red carpet of the Logos. <laughs> got down on one knee and we proposed there. And she said no first up. Or was <laughs> <it>? <laughs> of course she said yes. Yeah. Yeah. Two kids later, you're flying. Yeah. Thanks for your time today. Thank you for the gift. Good luck Friday night. You've got the blues. Yeah. Thanks very much.